Uh, well, welcome and welcome back to this YouTube channel, GIST channel, GIST relationship. How have you been? I hope you are good and I'm sure you are good, you are happy wherever you are. So good afternoon, good morning, good night, good evening, wherever you are watching from, I say it is well with you. Last week we started the Kanka Womda Esau relationship and we talked about lust and gluten. And last week I told you the only way you can cure lust is by self-discipline and self-control and to cure gluten is by what temperance it cures gluten. so today we're going to talk about greed oh. greed greedy people remember in the bible greedy geazi so greed is an excessive pursuit of material things material goods and my relationships have been destroyed by that Many of us today, we are after that material thing that we're going to gain in the relationship. Oh, was he, was he going to offer me? Was she going to offer me? And with that, many have been destroyed. Or oh, they are in a relationship. Oh, there is a party somewhere. And the ladies, oh, maybe I want to buy clothes for the party. How much? Here we spend the euro. You can say the clothes is for 800 euro to buy a piece of clothes that you're going to use for a party. And after the party, you put it under the bed excessive pursuit of material things because by the time you want this you want this you want that you want that you want that. even as a man as a woman you end up wanting and wanting and wanting yeah economy says woman wants an insatiable but you need to go for your needs but most today what we experience is that the wants supersede the needs i hope you know different with wants and needs your need is what you did that you're going to need over and over time. But your want is something that you need now, you want now, and after making use of it, you dump it somewhere. So why go for what you want? Why not go for what you need? That is greed. You want to have this. You want to have that. You want to have this. You want to have that. And if your man is not able to provide that what you want at that point in time, ah, eh, while I begin, all those sweet names you call him, they will vanish because he has not given into your wants not even need now into your wants or she has not given into your wants then everything changes the sweetheart the honey the whatever you call him is no more there avoid greed excessive pursuit of material goods it could be clothes it could be money it could be anything at all material things that you will gather and gather and gather and gather. After gathering them, what happens? You will go. In First Timothy chapter 6, he said, All those things you gather here and now, to whom they shall they belong to when you are gone? The man with the mansion, where is he going to be buried? It's outside. The clothes you acquire, you go now. Somebody someday will make use of them. Somebody who has not even labored for them is going to make use of them. So why acquire things that you don't even need? And that you begin to quarrel with your partner because he has not given into your want, because she has not given into your want. Avoid greed. The Bible puts it in Hebrew chapter 13, verse number 5. It says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Ujukukuru. And yuku, that's what we call it in my local language, Yoruba and Igbo. Covetousness. You are not satisfied with what you have. Be content with such things as you have. Hebrew chapter number 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without, no iota of it, without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Be content with what, be satisfied with what you have. Be happy with it. For he himself has said, for God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So why not worry us? Why are you disturbing yourself? Why are you disturbing him? Why are you disturbing her? Be satisfied with that you have. Remember last week we talked about comparison as well. By the time you begin to compare what you have with what another man has, then conversiousness sets in. And that is when you begin to have ujukokuru. That is when you begin to eye your neighbor's goods. And remember in the Ten Commandments he said, Thou shalt not eye another man's property. And when you eye those, when greed sets in, you can do anything to have that which you are longing for. You can do anything. 
even outside of relationship. You can go to another man who has promised you what your man is not promising you. Or go to another woman who is promising you what your woman can't promise you. Because of greed. Avoid it. Avoid covetousness. But because God is always with you. Be satisfied with whatever you have. That's what the Bible says. And for us to cure greed, what do we need? We need charity. Charity cures greed by putting the desire of others above yours. You see that? You put the desire of others above your own. When you see others above, when you consider others, you are not talking about yourself, yourself, yourself alone. That is when you'll be able to avoid greed because you are looking after other people. You don't even care much about yourself. You are going after other people's needs. And with that, you'll be able to eliminate greed in your life. You'll be able to eliminate greed even in your relationship. Because you are going after people's need. You know, I'm not saying you should not look after yourself. I'm not saying you should not do look after your relationship. But at the same time, by the time you focus only on that selfish entity, yourself and yourself, yourself, yourself alone, then you are on the road to greed. And greediness will destroy what you have been building over the years. I'm going to leave you with other Bible passages like Exodus chapter number 20, verse 17. You can read it at your leisure time. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 24 as well. Ecclesiastes and Philippians, Philippians chapter number 4, verse 6. Do not forget, you can read them at your leisure time. But keep in mind, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 9, concludes it that all the things you have acquired now, to whom shall they belong when you are gone? Reflect on these brothers and sisters. And I will leave you in the hands of God. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe, press that button, like, comment, and share. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remain blessed until I see you next week. We'll continue this kakawam. God, peace be with you.